Hi, this is an install video for the Fold and Go metal detector modification kit for the Garrett AT Pro and Garrett Ace series metal detectors. Um, here I have it already installed on my AT Pro. Uh, if you haven't seen the other videos, it shows a demonstration, talks more about this. Just briefly, what this does is it allows you to quickly fold the AT Pro down to this length, which is about 27 and a half inches. And all you got to do to get it back to operating length is press this button, rotate your coil over, unfold it, and you're ready to go. It locks into place, you heard that click, and you just get it to where you want, the length you want, it's ready to go. This video is for the installation of the Fold and Go Metal Detector Modification Kit. Um, if you haven't seen the other videos, it gives more information and then a demonstration on this. Just real quick, quickly, what that does is it allows you to fold your Garrett AT Pro, AT Max, or AT Gold, or a Garrett Ace Series detector down to right around 27 and a half inches when it's in the folded position. Um, just real quickly how that works is you just press this button here, rotate your coil over, open it up, get your coil where it needs to be for operating, then pull it out to where you want the position here. It's locked in place and it's ready to go. This locks wherever you want it. Of course, you're going to want it right there at the full 180 degree position. Then when you're done using your detector, fold your coil back over with the, the uh, longer end this way. Release it here, pull it in, rotate it over. And then press this button, fold it back, and then rotate it over into the cuff. Uh, a lot quicker and easier than uh, completely collapsing it. Uh, if you need to store it in a small space, uh, the reason I did this is to carry it on a motorcycle. Um, or if you have a small car or uh, some, some other reason that you might need it more compact. Um, again, real quick how that works. Rotate your coil out, press this button, fold it out, it locks in place, put your coil out, and then lock it wherever you want your operating length. To reverse it, just push that in, fold this over, press and hold this button, fold it over, quick and easy. So, uh, let me get to the install on this now. Um, it does require modifying your middle tube, which on the AT Pro, the Ace 400, AT Gold, and AT Max, you'll have these cam locks installed. Um, and what you end up doing is cutting this tube uh, and then putting the two pieces onto the folding unit. Uh, I'll get a lot into a lot of detail on that later, and there's a lot of details in the instructions on where to cut the tube, uh, how to line everything up, mark it, and uh, then do the final assembly. Uh, it's really not difficult, but if you're not good with tools, uh, you might uh, have a friend or someone that uh, knows how to do that a little better, you might get their help, uh, you know, if you're worried that you might mess it up. But watch this video, look at the instructions, uh, try to give as much detail and make it as simple as possible. Uh, but again, if you're not very handy with tools, you know, uh, you might need help from a friend. So what I'm going to do is, I've already got this mod, uh, modification on my AT Pro, obviously. So I'm going to do the modification to this Ace Series machine. First thing you're going to need to do is to take, take it apart. Uh, not completely, but you're going to have to get everything enough out to get your, your middle tube or center tube, uh, whatever you want to call it here, uh, that needs to come off. So to do that, take it. Undo your coil. Uh, now, if you had an AT Pro or AT Gold, AT Max, you have to undo your uh, your cams here. Um, I'll detail that in a little bit. Uh, but since this is an Ace, you just press this, pull that out. Do the same on the other end. Your middle tube's out and ready to go. So, if you look at these tubes, they're really almost identical. Um, the one with the cam locks has an extra hole or two here on the end 
that the cam lock's attached to. Other than that, they're the same length. Uh, these holes are spaced apart. Uh, everything else is the same. So this kit will work on either one. You can see it's already on my AT Pro. But now I'm going to put it on this uh, Ace 350. Um, if you have the AT uh, series, uh, now that you've got your center tube out, unscrew your cam lock, take that part off, and then this part comes off pretty easy. You can kind of pry on it on the outside of these two, uh, this piece here, and then uh, the easiest way I've found is to get a screwdriver or something in here to press the other side out, because what that's done is there's a little knob in here that fits into a hole similar to that. So it's pretty easy to get out. Uh, let's see if I can make it look easier or not. There it is. And that pops right off. You can see uh, the holes there. It's got the larger holes. Now you can see where the difference is in the two tubes. Everything's the same. Uh, with the exception of these two holes, and that's for your cam locks here. So put that one aside, and we're just going to work with this tube from this point on. Okay, once you've got your middle tube uh, disassembled off the machine, uh, the next step is going to be to mark it and cut it. I was going to use the uh, regular factory tube on that H350, but I've got this extra uh, tube with the cam lock, so I decided I'm going to go ahead and use it. Uh, I've already made my mark here. Um, where you do that mark is in the instructions. Uh, I would do it here, but um, because this may work for other machines that I might uh, do in the future, uh, I'm just going to leave that in the instructions. So anyhow, you make your mark. Uh, to cut the tube, uh, there's several ways you can do that. Uh, whatever tools you have that you can use, uh, it's going to be your choice. Uh, but what I like and my recommendation is a tubing cutter. Um, these are available at just about any hardware store. Pretty simple and easy to use. You just adjust this uh, opening to where the tube will go in. You line your mark up with this cutting wheel here. Then you put, uh, you tighten this down to put just a little tension on it. Uh, run it around the tube a few times tension a little more and so on and you just keep repeating that until it cuts all the way through. And what it does is it gives you a nice clean uh, 90 degree cut uh, so it's not all crooked, you don't have real nasty burred edges or anything like that. Uh, works real well. Uh, and this tube is just aluminum so it cuts nice and easy. Uh, shouldn't be any problems. So anyhow, uh, I'll show you how to do it with this. Uh, if you don't have a tubing cutter, you can use a hacksaw. Um, or whatever other uh, cutting tools you have. Um, again, that's up to you. Uh, just make sure, no matter what you're using, you know, be safe with it. Wear your safety glasses, gloves, whatever, you know, whatever you need to do. Just use some common sense there. So, put it in. Line the cutter up with my mark. Put a little tension on the, on the knob here. You can rotate the cutter or the tool. Tighten a little more. Rotate some more. Just keep repeating that. eventually cut all the way through. So there we've got a nice clean 90 degree cut. Um, you might want to clean up your edges with a little sandpaper uh, just to smooth it out a little, little bit. But both of these ends are going to be inside the folding mechanism, so it's not really necessary, but uh, it's just up to you how you want to do that. Next, what you're going to do is measure from each of these cut ends. Make sure you're doing it from the ends that were cut, because that's the two that are going to go into the folding mechanism. Measure up an inch and a half and make a mark. Make it in a few spots around the tube uh, on each tube. And the reason for that is when you seat this into the folding mechanism, 
you want to make, make sure that it seats in all the way and you're not going to be able to see how far it is in or anything but if you get it right to or right really close to that one and a half inch mark you're going to know that it's fully seated and uh, that's where you need to be so you want it all the way in so again inch and a half from here make your marks and then uh, you'll know that you're getting it fully seated so I'm going to go ahead and do that so inch and a half Actually, I messed up. I made that first one an inch and a quarter. Inch and a half. And again, make sure you're doing it for the cut end because that's the end going into the folding mechanism. Okay, so you got your marks an inch and a half on each end. Now, I'm going to seat these into the mechanism. Okay, now I've got the tubes seated into this. Um, it may take a little effort to get these all the ways in, all the way in, excuse me. Um, if you twist back and forth a little bit, it may help it go in a little bit. Um, but just make sure, once it's all the way in, that you've got at least to that one and a half inch mark that you made earlier. And then for the rotation of this, or the alignment of it, you look at your factory holes here and the holes here for where your screws would go if you decide to uh, drill this and mount it with the screws. The other option is you can epoxy this. Now, if you go with the epoxy, it has to be a composite compatible epoxy. Uh, your standard off-the-shelf uh, epoxy from big box stores uh, usually it does not work all that well with plastics, so make sure you some, use a epoxy like I recommend in the instructions. Uh, Loctite makes some, uh, it's called Hysol. Uh, they make several versions of it with different uh, cure and working times. So anyhow, get those uh, seated in there all the way. Look at these holes here versus this hole. They're almost 90 degrees apart when they're going to... Uh, when it's correctly aligned. Also, you notice the shorter tube needs to be on this end of the mechanism. So, if you were holding the metal detector and it was fully assembled here with your control box this way, you'd push your button here and this would fold that way. And there's a reason for this. Um, you could do it the other way, um, but I found that this is what works best, so this is what I'm showing. Um, and you don't want this um, let's say if you were in an operating position, um, you don't want this unit perfectly 90 degrees to these holes because then when you rotate this up, your coil and everything would hit your control box. So it needs to be slightly off that 90 degrees, slightly down, so when it rotates up, it'll be like this, and then your control box will sit here, and your coil will sit and rotate over into the arm cuff. So at this point, you've just got your tubes cut, and you've got your tubes seated. They're not permanently attached or anything. You want to test this out, and you want to be careful, make sure everything's aligned properly uh, before you do the final assembly, either with the screws or with the epoxy. Uh, if you did use the epoxy, uh, the longer the curing time uh, gives you a little more chance uh, to get this alignment figured out. Um, when you have it set right, uh, before you do the final assembly, you want to look down and make sure these holes, the factory holes, are all in line with each other. You can kind of see, I'm not sure if it'll show in the video, but there's a seam here on the folding unit. And that seam should give you a good reference point. If it looks like it's going right through the middle of these holes, it's not right because that's pretty much 90 degrees. You want to be off a little bit to where it's in probably the upper third or upper quarter of these holes. But to test it out, to know you're going to have it in the right spot, get your, uh, your S-Bend unit with the control box and everything attached. And your shorter tube, when it's attached here and locked in with your spring clip, um, that's going to be your reference on where everything's going from there. Uh, I'm leaving the cam locks off for now, 
this is just making it uh, a little easier so the cam locks aren't in the way when you're doing your alignments and all that, but uh, that won't be an issue in final assembly. So I'll just put it back together. Now, when you fold this, try to get a close up here, you see that it's hitting. So it's not in the right. Sorry about that. See that that's hitting there. So you want to get this rotated over some. You want to rotate it here between this tube and this to get that to where it's got uh, the same amount of clearance here and the same amount of clearance here. And you can kind of ignore the, the foam of this and just kind of try to get the best balance of distance that you can from this tube to this tube and then from this tube to your control box. And again, you want to have it twist here. Hopefully you can see that good there. There's pretty close to equal distance here and equal distance here. Uh, I've put a nice close-up uh, picture of that in the instructions uh, to make it a little easier to see. But now that that's correct, you know that this tube here is aligned correctly to this and to this. So then unfold it at that point and now you'll notice that you need to adjust this tube to where it lines up with this one. So without moving this, so hold this nice and tightly and without, without moving any of this section, grip that and rotate this tube slightly until it aligns down here. And it may take a little bit of effort. You can look at your seam here again. And this one's slightly different than when I did my AT Pro. So uh, where the seam is showing. So it looks I'm like, like if I fold that seam I'd be right near the top edge of this hole. Now rotate that around, look at it, make sure everything looks aligned nice and straight to the factory holes. Uh, if you can't tell if it's aligned very well by eyeballing it, um, you could set up a couple of uh, pieces that were like uh, square blocks or something that were the exact same height and hold one tube there and then the other to see if the holes were perfectly aligned to each other, make sure it's straight and level. Um, but really it's not necessary if you just put your coil back on lock your coil into place as if you're in operating, operating it then you can hold it and then see if everything is aligned as you would normally use it again that's with everything locked sorry about that Everything locked here, everything locked here, and just have your detector completely set up like you're going to use it and see that everything is aligned and perpendicular to each other. Once you're satisfied that it is, go ahead and remove the lower coil assembly again. And again, make sure this hasn't moved. It hasn't. Make sure your tubes are still aligned, because if these aren't real tight, they could have moved on you a little bit. Fold the unit up again. Check your clearances. Everything looks good here on mine. So, at this point, you need to decide if you want to use epoxy, or are you going to drill and use the screws that are included in the kit. Um, I like the drilling method. Um, Epoxy, it can just get messy. Uh, if you get any out on the outside of this, you're going to need to clean that up. Also, when you screw it down, these little uh, pieces here that move freely on their own, put the screws in there, it locks those down. If you use epoxy, you either have to epoxy and clamp those till it sets up, or put a little screw on each one just to hold that down in place. So, I'm going to drill it uh, like I did my AT Pro. Um, everything looks good, it's lined up. Double check everything. 
and unfold it again, make sure nothing's moved. Everything looks good here. So, to drill it, uh, what you're going to want to do is uh, either with a nice sharp pencil or a mechanical pencil like this, mark your holes. And again, this is with everything aligned properly. I know I'm stressing that a lot, but it's to prevent uh, making a mistake. And you want to mark all four holes. You move this out of the way, you'll get a little easier, a little better mark. Same thing on this one. So, now that your holes are marked, you know where they need to go, you can disassemble this and do your drilling. Uh, I'm not going to show that on the video. Um, if you have a drill press, that's probably the best way to do this. That's what I'm going to do. Um, if you don't have a drill press, um, you can do it by hand. Just make sure you get in the center of that. And I'm completely disassembling this, or really just pulling these two tubes off uh, to drill the tubes individually without having the whole unit attached like I am here. Um, it's up to you whether you want to do it that way or go ahead and drill it with it like this. Uh, either way should work fine. Just make sure you get the center of that hole. And the drill bit that we use, uh, it's in the instructions, is a 3 16 inch drill bit uh, or a letter drill bit of basically the same size or metric bit, whatever you happen to have. Um, like I said, drill, bit, drill press is probably the best way to do this. If you don't have a drill press, you can do it with a hand drill. Uh, just make sure you hit the center of the hole here. And don't drill here and try to make it straight through all through the, to the other side. Um, you want to drill here just until you get through the tube, rotate it over, and then drill the other side. And that's whether you're doing it with this attached or if you're just doing the tube itself. I'm just doing the tube itself, so I'm going to take that out, drill that, and then I'll come back and finish up the video. As you can see here, my marks, just make sure you get the center of them. Um, if you're not real good uh, with a drill or don't have a drill press, you might use a bit just a slightly larger than a 3 16 bit. That'll give you a little bit of wiggle room if it didn't line up perfectly. But again, drill one side, rotate it over, drill the other. If you just try to drill straight through, um, there's a lot uh, bigger chance that you won't have them lined up correctly, and then your screw uh, may need a little work to get it through. Uh, you may have to enlarge one of the holes slightly or something like that, and we want to avoid that if at all possible. So, get that tube, got this tube, still see I've got my inch and a half marks here, so I know it's fully seated. Um, Drill one side, then drill the other side. So, let me do that, and I'll be back. Okay, now that I've got these drilled, uh, it's time to uh, do the assembly, check everything out. Uh, so, let me do that real quick. Again, make sure the shorter tube goes in this end. Excuse me, like this. That way, when this folds, everything comes to your right as it folds up to the control box and the coil goes over. So, get that going in there. Line the hole up with the hole you drilled or line it back up like you had if you're doing the uh, choosing to use the epoxy. Line that up. Take the uh, screw that's included with the kit. Now you can do this two ways. Um, the kit comes with four of these nylon washers. Um, if it, once you assemble it, if it seems that uh, you've got a little too much uh, of the screw sticking out of the bolt like that, um, then you can put another nylon wash, washer in to bring that back down. Uh, the previous one I did two uh, the nylon washers in. Worked fine. Uh, I'm going to do it with just one on this. And where you want the, the washer at is on the side that you're going to put the nut on. So it's not really necessary on this end, but it is included if you want to do it that way. So I'm going to put a screw in. 
with 3 16 makes it to where this number 10 screw just fits. Looks like I got the drill uh, in the right spot. Everything's lining up nicely. See the screw coming in on the other side there. The threads are actually touching the uh, tube slightly, so get that fully going with the screwdriver there. Now you put your nylon washer on. Then tighten it down with a, uh, let's see, I believe this is 3 8 yes. Tighten this down with a 3 8 nut driver or a 3 8 wrench. And when you tighten this down, you just want to tighten it until it's snug. Uh, if you really crank it down, you can uh, actually pinch this and crush your tube, which obviously you're not going to want to do. So just make sure there's no play in that. It's nice and snug. Um, looks like the one washer worked real well on this. Uh, we don't have any of the nuts sticking, or sorry, any of the screw threads sticking out. Um, so the chances of you cutting yourself or something on the threads is pretty slim. So do the same thing on this tube and uh, I'm going to go ahead and do that and I'll come back and uh, finish up. So be right back. Okay, got the, everything together there. Uh, the other screw went in uh, nice and easy. I just didn't want to make the video any longer than I have to because I'm already gone longer than I expected. Um, both tubes are in, they're seated, uh, they're still aligned. So all I got to do now is uh, reassemble everything. So remember the shorter tube goes toward your control box. That's locked in. Now you can see everything's back together. Okay, so here it is, fully installed on the Ace 350. Uh, this is in the folded position, obviously. Begin to undo it. Just rotate your coil out. Press and hold this button. Open it to its 180 degrees. And here, that will snap and lock into place. But it will lock at several positions, so hold it until you're 180 degrees and release it. Unfold your coil, bring it down to your operating position, whatever hole you normally leave that on, and now you're ready to go. If you had the cam locks installed at this point, you can tighten your cam locks back. Um, what I do is I always leave this one tight. I'll leave this one, uh, I'll tighten it up, but I'll leave it uh, just barely hand tight, so that way when I go to collapse the detector, uh, just one uh, easy twist and that gives you enough uh, tension to hold it but then as you release it it, gives, it lets enough tension off to where you can collapse this tube into this one so it all folds up uh, to be more compact. So again fold that over, push in your spring clip and as you do that if you rotate this slightly that will keep it from catching in the other holes. Press and hold this Hold it over. There you are. Looks like that one worked out pretty good. Um, if you notice, uh, with the standard coil here on the Ace, it sticks out past uh, your cuff of ways. Um, if I have my AT Pro right next to it, the reason for this is that your S bend is slightly longer on the AT Pro. So if you lined up the cuffs exactly, you can see there's a difference here where the S bend is. So basically from here to here, this is longer. So that's why this looks extended here. This is the uh, smaller coil 
Um, with the full size coil that's uh, like this, it extends out to where it's just past right about there. So, uh, thanks for watching. I hope this clears up a lot of the questions on uh, how this works and how the install is done. Um, I did have some questions on whether this would void your warranty from Garrett or not. Well, I can't answer for Garrett. I don't work for them. I don't own the company, so that's not my decision. However, the only piece you are modifying is this. Uh, this is just their middle tube, uh, middle shaft, whatever you want to call it. Uh, it's just an aluminum hollow tube with holes punched in it. That's it. Um, if you did need to send it in for warranty for whatever reason, um, you can easily switch back to a factory tube. All you got to do is take that, the uh, tube that has the folding mechanism attached, um, take that off, put a factory tube back on, uh, only take a few minutes and it's back to factory specs. Uh, you may want to do that if you sell it, send it in for warranty or whatever. But I can't imagine it would vo void the warranty on anything other than this one piece. And again, all this piece is, is the aluminum tube. You don't have to get this straight from Garrett. You can get this from a local dealer. Um, like I did, I ordered it. I think it was about 15 bucks plus a couple bucks shipping. Um, so, um, I know there are other uh, options out there um, that allow you to collapse your detector. Um, advantages of what I've done here versus uh, those is, number one, uh, is cost. Um, the other ones I've seen are well over $100. Um, you know, I'm roughly about half that price on uh, eBay. And then uh, some of the other advantages of mine is, uh, other than cost, um, is you don't make any permanent modification to your control box. I've seen the kit out there for the Garrett uh, AT Pro or AT Max, AT Gold, and you have to permanently modify uh, your control box here. Um, and when you do that, that may void your warranty. Uh, again, I don't work for Garrett, so I can't say that for sure, but my understanding is you have to permanently modify the two posts that mount here, uh, I believe is what it is, uh, to mount your control box to a whole other shaft. Um, that would certainly, I would think, would certainly void your warranty before just modifying this one tube would. Um, the other thing is, as this folds, you can keep your coil or uh, your coil wire wrapped around your tubes like you would normally have it. So you don't have, uh, if you collapse one, uh, like a telescoping, your coil is going to be all bunched up and poking out all over the place. This keeps it pretty much in its original location. Um, so that's the advantages I've found here. Um, this fits nicely in a uh, 30 inch, 34 inch uh, sling bag that I found. Uh, this made for, a, uh, it's called a double rifle case. Uh, it's made by UTG. Uh, it works real well if you want a little bit extra room uh, to carry and store it in. A 36 inch double rifle case uh, by several manufacturers works real well. Just make sure it's made for a double rifle case. Um, that way it will have the extra thickness to allow for the thickness of your housing and, and your cuff and everything. And I, I have a 36 inch double rifle case made by, uh, I believe it's Condor. Works real well. It has external pockets, uh, one of them which is long enough to store a whole other coil with the lower shaft attached and it's also uh, the detachable uh, or excuse me also some of the external pockets are detachable uh, which is nice they store headphones uh, whatever else you might want to carry and you could even use one as a uh, as your finds bag if you wanted um, and in that 36 inch bag I can actually fit two uh, metal detectors in it um, here in a second, I'll take a picture. I'll put this uh, AT Pro and my Ace 350 both in that bag and kind of show you what it looks like, and I'll include that picture at the end of this video. So, hope that answers a lot of your questions. Um, uh, check this out on eBay. Uh, if you have any questions, uh, send me a message there, and thanks for watching. Okay, this is my 36-inch uh, double rifle case I just mentioned. Um, this one is made by Condor. Um, a 
if you can see that there. Uh, works real well. Um, I believe I paid around $50, maybe $60 for this. But like I mentioned, it's got these detachable uh, external pockets with this uh, mole system, they call this, mole or molly, uh, depending on how you want to pronounce it. Um, these just simply slide through and then snap. Um, there's a lot of other accessories, pouches, and different things that you can attach uh, with this system. Uh, it was designed for the military, of course. Um, it's got these, it's got both Velcro and the snap closure. Um, internal pockets divided in there. Uh, you can take this pouch off, use it as a uh, as your finds bag. Same thing with this one or this one. Um, you can set this up, configure it how you want. I've got a bag with some spare batteries and things in here. Um, again, this one's removable also. Same as that. Then you've got this external pocket here underneath these. And that's got these double zippers. Will fit a whole full size coil with the lower shaft attached. Zip that back up and stores real nice. Then the main compartment will hold. two metal detectors if they are if you have the fold and go system on it. So there's one, you've got a center divider here, put the other one in with the control box opposing the other one, and then zip it all up. metal detectors and one 36 inch bag.